We're still watching the tournament. Yeah. We're trying to get this out as soon as it's done. Exactly. If the slipper fits, a lot of upsets. Cinderella stories. March Madness. It's begun in pickleball. March Madness. Kicked off the actual March Madness. Yep. All right, let's do this. Here okay, we go. here we go. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of King of the Court. We are your hosts. I am Tyler Lung, and we got Jimmy Miller, the one and only Jimmy Miller over here. I am in my A favorite striped shirt because everybody loved my previous striped shirt so much. Well, that one actually has a little color. It doesn't look quite as... This one's pretty good. Prisoner-esque. Prisoner-esque. Soon. Yeah. One day. Anyways, thank you for joining us for this episode. We have a lot to get uh, go through today. We are yeah. actually still watching some of the craziness that has happened from Austin Open, the PPA Austin yeah. Open. Um, real quick, we're going to do a quick synopsis of MLP. So, Jimmy, what's the latest with MLP? So they merged officially. Yeah. Well, first, let's talk. Start with our title sponsor. Okay, Pickler. 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 So speaking, who is Pickler? Of, speaking of MLP, speaking of MLP, there's been an official announcement that MLP schedule came out. Uh huh. So that's happened since the last time. Okay. Right. And we, we can pull that up. But the Pickler in Kaysville, which is their main hub, mm-hmm. is hosting an MLP event. Is it at that location it's or are they tagging at, along with the PPA tournament? No, they're hosting it at the Pickler in Kaysville. Awesome. So That'll if be you've sweet. been to the Pickler in Kaysville, it's 15. 15 courts. 15 courts, yep. Really good seating, really good viewing. Awesome seating. Yep. So they'll be able to essentially turn those courts into probably like bring in bleachers yep. and make a championship court. It's going to be sick. And Kaysville, for those that aren't obviously from Utah, it's 20 minutes from Salt Lake. Yep. 20 minutes from downtown Salt Lake. Yep. So um, the Pickler, yeah, the number one, the premier indoor venue in the entire country, 200 plus franchise locations. They have their grand on. Opening of Naperville, Naperville Chicago. in Chicago, yep. which I am going out to this week. Uh, I'll be there this Saturday. Yes. We will be doing a little play with the pro Q and A. You can take pictures if you want. You can make jokes, tell me stories. I'll be there to listen. You think people want to take pictures with you? I don't know. Probably they not. Probably do. Every time we go to a tournament, they're all over it. Probably not. Um, so yeah, go check them out. They uh, they're awesome. They're big supporters of the show. If you're wanting to get involved in the franchise business, own your own pickleball facility, which we definitely could have used this last week in you Austin. I just had somebody reach out to me about that. I need to get back to them. Actually, get back to them. You're losing out I'm on s- helping the helping the pickler. Yes, pickler is the best. Check them out, and obviously, our dear dear friend George. Nobody better. Nobody better. Okay, moving on. And our next sponsor is Pickleball Central. Yeah. They are the number one online retailer in the entire world. They have the largest selection of paddles, bags, balls, anything pickleball related. Yep. And we also have a very special KOTC code that you can use that will save you the most money out of any other code out there. It is. It's the highest code. Yep. Is what we were told. So go use it. High um, savings. And guess what? That actually cuts into our commission. But hey, we want to give you the best deal. Yeah, I heard. I, I learned that this week. Exactly. <laughs> so we're passing. We're literally passing the savings on to you. Exactly. So so go check them out. Pickleballcentral.com. They have the best uh, return policy, and they just are good people. They're the the pioneers. They were the first to yeah, do I, this. I've honestly bought multiple paddles from them you know, years and years ago. Okay. So, all right, let's get into it. Uh, We should have quite a bit to talk about. Yeah. So let's start with MLP. So MLP made, they finally are making some progress Mm -hmm. and they made a couple of huge announcements this week. Number one, the schedule is out. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, let's just run it down. The first event will be May 9th through 12th in Atlanta. Now, one thing that they mentioned is that every MLP team will essentially attend four of these events so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then there's a mid season tournament, and a post season tournament. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at probably six to seven events for M- per MLP team. Mm-hmm. And how does this uh, coincide with the PPA tournament? Is so there one right before, or right? Almost after? all of these are piggybacked off of a PPA tournament. Are they before or after both? Okay. That depends on the, so tournament. this one, this Atlanta one, is that before or after? Um, let's look at the PPA, the PPA dates for that. I think it's before. Okay. that sounds like it's before, but I don't have all the yeah. tournaments, uh, memorized. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's disappointing that you don't expect more out of you. 
So Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta's May 13th to 19th, and so the PPA is, is 9th to 12th. So it's before, yep. Okay. So we go Atlanta in May, and then we go Washington, D.C. Okay. And then they're going to do their midseason tournament. They couldn't really move the dates, but that's going to be the Beer City Open okay. in Grand Rapids, hosted by none other than Andrea Coop. Mm-hmm. Coopy Nation. Coopy Nation. And then... Go we, Aces. She was on my team last, yeah, last season. Yeah, she was. And then we're going to go to Kansas City, mm-hmm. where all the drama began. Okay. PPA and MLP are going to do a joint venture in Kansas City where all the drama began. Yeah. Crazy. And then Salt Lake. Is Steve Kuhn going out to that one? I hope so. We have a lot to talk about Steve Kuhn this weekend. Made an appearance. And then Salt Lake, which again is going to be piggybacked off of the Salt Lake event. It's That one is actually after the Salt Lake event. Okay. So you're going to have Salt Lake. And, then- and are these starting... Generally speaking, are they starting the day after the tournament or is there like one or two days? Yeah, in they're between? starting. I mean, yeah, Atlanta goes 9th to the 12th and then the 13th is the PPA event. Mm-hmm. So, but I think it's going to depend on if they're going off of after progression draws or they're going off of. But the reality is a lot of these players, I mean, they're going to be checking into these cities for 10 days, mm-hmm. you know, or depending on what tournaments. Uh, after Salt Lake, September 19th to the 22nd will be in New York. Okay. Uh, City Pickle. I assume it's going to be somewhere like City Pickle or somewhere. I think that someone said it's like Long Island or. Okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going Virginia Beach, so we're real East Coast here. Okay. And then we follow that up October fourteenth to sixteenth, Las Vegas. Close, okay. close for us. And then the twenty fourth to the twenty seventh is in Miami, and then we have the playoffs. So the playoffs, the first round of the playoffs, will be the first week of November, and mm-hmm. it's going to be back at Brookhaven. Okay. And then the second round of the playoffs, the finals, the grand finale will be in Orlando. Okay. So that'll be the end of November. No San Clemente location. Zero California. As of now. As of now, but zero California locations with four California teams. Interesting. Which is interesting. In fact, Las Vegas and Salt Lake. I mean, even Salt Lake is mountain west Mm -hmm. las vegas is as far west as we get other than las vegas and salt lake i mean we are spending two tournaments in the eastern time zone and i mean in the central time zone and all the rest in the east okay so very east all right yep so the schedules are out there um this week most likely we will be doing a little mock draft of the mlp so that was the second big announcement from mlp April, and I don't know if they've actually announced this yet, but mm-hmm. I've got the email, so I'll announce it. April 2nd mm-hmm. will be the Premier League draft. April 3rd will be the Challenger League draft. Mm-hmm. They're going to do it remotely, so they're not going to do a live draft. It will be done remote. Okay. Um, All on FaceTime? FaceTime, Zoom. I think they have their own draft software they've actually developed. Yeah. And I think that those will be done in the evening. So April 2nd and April 3rd, now, the draft will take place. Now, do you know if place. this is an actual live draft or will they already have this completed? Well, they're not even going to, they're not even filming it. It's going to just be done. I mean, they maybe film the Zoom okay. and record the Zoom, but yeah, they're, it's all done remote. So gotcha. like for us, I think for the Black Bears, we'll get together with, you know, me and Richie and, you know, maybe our coaches, maybe George, Austin, and probably like, hunker down in a war room somewhere whether mm-hmm. we do that at the pickler or you know maybe we can convince richie to fly us somewhere nice yeah and like do do it just as a team mm-hmm. but we will not it won't be in north carolina where the event will actually be real quick place. in our discord it's been popping off like crazy do not join it unless you want to be uh interrupted with notifications 24 7 but somebody asked a question which uh is very true at this stage in the game with pickleball so when people are drafting teams yeah a lot of times the coaches or GMs or whoever, they're going to call upon players yeah. to help draft the team. Yeah. Do you think that's uh, legal or do you think that should be uh, illegal? Well, I think once you draft your first round pick, mm-hmm. they sh- you should call But them what this person input. was going at, off of is they don't do, do this in the NFL. They don't do this in NBA. Could you imagine somebody saying, hey, help us draft the team? Yeah, and I think... And now, pa- they might get that information beforehand, but not during the actual draft will they get that information. Yeah, but I do think that like in the NFL, if you're to draft a player, for example, if, you're, if you have a guy that was on your team last year who went to Alabama... Mm-hmm. Right. And you're going to draft maybe someone that was his teammate 
a year later, you probably do call upon that player to at least get some background on them. Yeah, but is that during the draft well, I think or before? previous? Yeah, sure. previous, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. But there's also some people out there that, like, obviously have, you know, I mean, one of them, you know, look at Anna Bright, who mm-hmm. clearly has an eye for talent, right? She was the one that said, go get Rachel Rohrbacher. Yeah. Anna Bright was like, I want Rachel, mm-hmm. right? Anna Bright is the one that said, get De Eskew mm-hmm. before De Eskew was actually, you know, he's always been a good player, but De Eskew seems to have really turned a corner. Yeah. And so I, I think that at least your first round pick, you want to talk to them about it. But yes, talking to other players during the draft is a little bit interesting, especially if you're, those players are not on your team. Yeah. And I think as this, as MLP starts to grow, we'll see less of that. Yeah, I agree. Right. Because I mean, I've already, you're already seeing draft strategy, Mm-hmm. People are being like very, you know, keeping it very close to the vest okay. on their draft strategy now. All right. Awesome. Thank you for the update. Uh, like I said, we will be providing a little bit more uh, MLP uh, updates here throughout the next one to two weeks. Yeah. Austin. PPA Austin. What a... Can we say shit show? Sure. I mean, just you can't control the weather. You can't. Let me say, I, I, I am a very big proponent of indoor pickleball. I love indoor pickleball. I think it's great. Don't people want to see the best pickleball played at the highest stage, at the best stage? Yeah. So most of the time, that's going to be indoors, indoor courts. Could you imagine basketball being played outdoors? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I don't think you're wrong about that. I mean, if you look at Austin... As a perfect example of what there happened. were not many uh, facilities there, which is why it was such a. So they need a pickler Austin. They need a pickler Austin, yeah. So let's think about Austin just for a minute. Like even so, the rain. So you start out and it rained every single day. Actually, the front end was actually okay. Uh, singles was fine. Singles was fine. And actually, mixed. Uh, there was a little bit of yeah. delays. Yeah. So there's delays in and mixed. There's delays in gender. Mm-hmm. Um, there's delays on championship Sunday. They're finishing today on a Monday Mm -hmm. championship Monday championship Monday, which Ben Johns is. And actually we'll say Annalie Ben Johns is one for one. Annalie waters is zero for two on championship Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but here's the other thing you get to championship Monday. They finally avoid the rain. Although Mm -hmm. if you look at the skies, it looks like it's going to start any time. Yeah. But now there's freaking 20 mile per hour winds. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ben, every freaking shot, he's like, talking about how windy it is and it's clearly affecting the players affecting the gameplay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, there's, there's two different arguments to be made, right? There's the argument to be made that that's part of the sport and mm-hmm. how you deal with it is, you know, part of the strategy. And it's just, that's, that's part of it. Kind of like, you know, say golf, right? Where mm-hmm. the elements are part of the sport, or maybe there's the purists out there. that are like, we want the best player to win in the best conditions yep. and have just to be strictly your skill set. Mm-hmm. And clearly you're a proponent of that. I am a proponent of that. Yeah. For most of the tournaments, I think there should still be outdoor tournaments, but I think there needs to be way more indoor tournaments. I also think that they need to have, and I know that they did their best, but they need to have a contingency plan. Um, but there's not a lot of places. In exactly. Do what that. do you do if there are no, there but are no facilities. There was there. one facility that was available with a couple courts. Which one is that? And that was Dreamland. Dreamland, baby. That's so only... for those that don't know, Dreamland is Steve Kuhn's house, mm-hmm. essentially. And Steve Kuhn is the founder of, of MLP. MLP. He was forced out. There's a big lawsuits and a big to do. And somehow PPA <laughs> ends up playing at Dreamland. Do you know how much equity he got back from allowing people? I mean, I really want to know what happened now. I mean, maybe <laughs> the fact that Connor Pardo was not at this tournament, it helped. Uh, <laughs> Who made that call? I heard dead serious. I heard a rumor that Deckel. So Deckel Barr and Steve Kuhn are very, very close. Uh-huh. Extremely close. Yeah. I heard a rumor that they asked Deckel to call Steve. Yeah. And he did. And Steve. <laughs> how funny would that have been if and, Steve said the courts are busy? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Courts are full. <laughs> but. And Steve let them use them. Now, How much do you know. think he charged them? I mean, he had, I mean, Rick, let's be real. Like Steve Kuhn, I don't know. What if he like, <laughs> he made him get on like the court. What reserve. if he made him like sign something in, in really fine print? He said, give me, give me all my equity back. <laughs> yeah. And they or signed it. It'd be funny if he was like, honestly, you're going to have to check on the court reserve app or jump in a group me, <laughs> see if they're available. They're $15 an hour. I don't know, but. That's very 
generous of Steve to do that. Yeah, he we didn't love have Steve to do that. Yeah, he could have absolutely f the PPA. Yeah, and unless he got paid a grundle of money, and there's something we don't know about, and then maybe it wasn't as generous. Mm-hmm. But so men's doubles, we'll start with that. that okay, let's go into the draws. Yeah. Um, so men's doubles ended up moving to Dreamland. Women's went to Eastside Paddle Club, which is another indoor facility. Yep, which was that was about an hour away. And we also had a lot of players just simply pull out because they were missing yeah. flies. They didn't want to have to deal, so deal with the So how far driving. away is Dreamland from? Dreamland wasn't that bad. It was probably 40 minutes or so, 35 okay. to 40 minutes. Okay. But I heard, I didn't go there, but I heard the other place was closer to an hour well, yeah, away. Yeah, because what they did was you played up to the quarters. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, now everybody come back. The rain stopped. Well, they were initially only going to play up to the quarters and then yeah. just can't then move it to the next date. But then yeah. the sun came out yeah. and they said, actually, we're going to try to play as much as we can. Yeah. Which is probably the right decision. Yeah. So men's doubles, the biggest, I mean, I think the number one thing that we need to talk about is down go Ben and Colin. Okay. Ben and, ben and Colin lose again in ben, in their home city. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, Ben had a, had a 15 minute drive to the courts. Yeah. He got to sleep in his own bed. He got to snuggle with his girlfriend. Yep. Who he said has a big surprise for him for his birthday. His birthday's today. 25. He's 25. Big Happy two birthday, five. Benjamin Johns. 25. Yeah. I won't tell you what he told me he did on his 21st birthday, but anyways, Ben and Colin lose to Christian and Zane. Not only did they lose to Christian and Zane, but I mean, they kind of rolled through them. Yeah, the second game was very close. It, it uh, was 15-13. Yeah. But I felt like Christian and Zane were in control the entire time. Mm-hmm. So that's a big win. I mean, that's a big upset. I was in the quarters too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then moving down the bracket. So I would, I do want to talk about you and Julian Okay. playing Christian and Zane. Yep. So you guys won the first game. We won the first game fairly easily. Yes. You lost the second. Yep. And then in the third, you're up 6-0. 6-0. Now I'm watching this match. Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys are up 6-0. And Zane kind of decides that he's not going to slow a ball down mm-hmm. and they're going to either... They're going to go down swinging. Mm -hmm. It's probably the best way to put it. And he starts driving everything. So Zane's on the right. You guys are returning everything to Zane. Mm -hmm. And he's driving every ball essentially right at Julian. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like Julian just forgot how to block a drive. Yeah. I mean, at the top 10, top 15, when those guys want to drive balls, they're coming in pretty hot. Yeah. And so... There were in that they ended up coming back and winning eleven eight, mm-hmm. and in that sequence of their comeback, there had to be six or seven drives put into the net. Mm-hmm. There was there was like a couple blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was insane. Yeah, and it just felt like it was just kind of just kind of unraveled for you guys. Yeah. One thing to note: Did you see I was not wearing a headband? I did. I was wearing a hat and we ended up losing. So That's moral true. of the story, go back to the headband. Go back to the headband. As goofy as you look, go back to the headband. Do you want to hear something a little embarrassing? So I don't know if it's embarrassing or not. We just kind of do. weird, but uh, me and Julian were playing in that match uh, against Zane and Did Christian. Did he have his bag? Did he have the $5,000 bag? I didn't see it. Oh yeah. It's Cause it's at dreamland. So everything was like pushed off to the side. So oh. you have to stash your stuff oh, um, yeah. off the court, everything like that. Anyways, Zane and Christian played incredibly well. I thought they played really well. Yeah. Um, I mean, they made it to the the finals. The yeah, they made it to yeah. the finals. Yeah, they lost. To... Um, so to be honest, that for in my opinion, that wasn't that bad of a showing. It was actually a decent showing uh, with Julian. Anyways, we ended up playing this point, and it was a crazy point, and Julian says, Andiamo. Yeah. And then do you know what I yell? What do you yell? What do you think I yell? Andiamo as well, or you probably well. I don't know. How do you say let's go? So uh, I I serve my mission in Chile, so I speak a little bit of Spanish. Yes, and so I yelled "vamonos" oh. like really loud. And after I said that, I'm like, "What am I doing?" <laughs> you got into it with him. <laughs> oh my gosh, Julian got you. I was dying. I looked at my, I just stood there. I was like, "Did I really just say vamonos?" <laughs> hey, you. He got you. But in my defense, I was in Chile for two years. 10 years ago. Yes, but I was there for two years. That's true. So you're saying you're more Chilean than Julian is Italian? <laughs> is that uh, what we're getting at? I can't believe I yelled vominos. <laughs> you, you let Julian, he, you felt his energy. His, his andiamo was much louder than mine. Oh, so he, I don't yeah. think many people heard mine, but <laughs> I, I, I let it out. His energy, it rubbed off of you. This is why your parents tell you to pick good friends yeah. and to hang out around good people so they don't influence you negatively. Next time... 
Only headband, though. Headband and no vominos. No okay? vominos. Anyways, that was a crazy match. We had some really good points there. Yeah. Um, ended up losing. Really wish we could have got that. I really wanted to play the Johns Brothers. Yeah. I mean, um, that, was, that was tough. And then, you know, going down the bottom half of the bracket, um, I mean, J-Dub and Dylan or J-Dub and Dylan, they picked up a couple big wins. Um, Matt Wright. Matt Wright. So here's the crazy thing. Matt Wright and Andre Deescu. So... As we know, James Ignatowicz has pulled out of the last two events because mm-hmm. he has a hurt shoulder. Mm-hmm. Andre Deskew has stepped in. He's stalled his partner. He's stealing his girlfriend probably at this moment. Uh-huh. I mean, he is married, so we won't put that out there. But um, And he has been lights out. Mm-hmm. Deskew and Matt Wright, they beat Roscoe Bellamy and Jack Monroe, who are a young upstart team. And then they go and they beat... They lose... 0-11 to J-Dub and Dylan. Yeah. First game. Then they come back and win 4-5. Four four and and five. 5 in the semis. 11-4, yeah. 11-5. And then in the finals, they freaking beat Christian and Zane. Yeah. 11-4, 11-9, 11-4. Yeah. Three straight. Yeah. Matt Wright turning back the clock. Yeah. like Father time. Father time. Old man Matt Wright. Desky was a freaking monster this weekend. You want to hear something interesting that I recently heard? So, you know Hunter Johnson? Yeah. How he subbed in for the Mad Drops, I think, last year in Daytona for MLP. Uh-huh. So, that was just one tournament or yeah. one event. Yeah. He ended up winning close to 30% of the MLP's prize money since they won the Super Final. Really? 30%. That's a pretty good job, Hunter. No wonder <laughs> Paris is still with him. <laughs> That's impressive. 30% for yeah. playing like a couple yeah. matches. So they lost to freaking Deckel and Tardio. They did. 13-11 in the third. In the third because Deckel got to play at Dreamland, his home yep. courts with Steve Kuhn watching. Yeah. With Father Steve. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Um, no, I mean, honestly, it was exciting, but it was so disjointed. It was it was kind of hard to follow and get into it. And, and I don't blame that. Somebody made a... A tweet. I won't. I won't call him out, but it was a very short tweet, like his podcast, and he mentioned something about. Oh, maybe it wasn't him. Actually, never mind. It was someone else, some other random guy, who mentioned something about how many amateurs were essentially getting screwed mm-hmm. because of the because of this. And Coop actually jumped on there, and she said, "Look, they can't control the weather. Yeah, and there is weather insurance if you choose to buy it. Mm-hmm. If you're spending already spending three four hundred dollars on the tournament, you might as well spend the forty for the weather insurance. Yeah." Um, and basically just kind of talked about, you know, well, PPA should refund that money and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. But there's sunken costs. Into oh yeah. This already. I mean, a lot of people, they don't realize or they forget what actually goes into these tournaments. I mean, I've ran a very small tournament and compared to what these are and the amount of production, the amount of staff, the amount of things that you have to yeah. get in order to run a successful tournament. It's crazy. And most people don't, don't even think about by, that. By the way, I saw that Pickler is... Coming, has a tournament coming up called the Kaching tournament. That has to do with you, right? I'm the founder. <laughs> Kaching tournament. Yeah. It's like their version of Moneyball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I figured that had to do with you. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, yeah, it's unfortunately there's already hard costs involved and it sucks and, but it's kind of one of the risks that you, that you, that you have to take. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I mean, you the can. only thing I will say is it seems like the PPA on Saturday mm-hmm. sent out notifications that it was canceled for the amateurs a little bit early. I think they sent it out around two o'clock yeah. and right around two thirty or so it, it got it was, sunny again. The sun came out. Yeah. Yeah. And, that sucks. But so yeah, congrats to Dayescu and Matt Wright. I mean, so my question for you, Matt Wright continues to win without Riley. Yes. Uh, John's. Yeah. Do they bounce back? I mean, yeah, they're going to bounce back, but but I think that we are seeing more parity. Like, I think we're starting to see mm-hmm. more parity in the sport. This is what everybody wanted. This was kind of the complaints. We were tired of seeing Ben and Annalie triple crown after triple crown after triple crown. Where 2024, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, obviously Annalie has still done it until today. Mm-hmm. But 2024, we haven't seen that, right? Like, Ben has won his last two singles events, but but he, I mean, him and Colin have lost, is that three times this year? Seems like it. Two or three. Yeah, two or three times yeah. this year. Um, Maybe two. Him know. and Annalie just lost for the first time in mixed, but we're starting to see it. Yeah. We're starting to see the other players catch up. We're seeing the other players. And, you know, social media is full of lies and half-truths, but we are seeing other players train super hard with pickleball-specific trainers on mm-hmm. social media. We're seeing them drill 
we're seeing them essentially follow what Ben has been doing for five years mm -hmm. and they're starting to catch up. So my, somebody mentioned this to me cause, uh, contrary to popular belief, I am not that big into golf. Uh -huh. Um, but somebody said Tiger Woods, he was extremely dominant in let's say 99 through 2004 or so yeah, around as that dominant era. as it gets as dominant as it gets. And do you know what his win percentage was? What? This could be wrong because I'm just spewing stuff I saw on the internet, but somebody said it was around 30%. Yeah. So even with 30%, right. yeah. he was still touted as the GOAT, the best of all time, yeah. the Thir greatest. I mean, 30% in golf is insane. Yeah. Considering most, most, you got to think that if you win two to three events per year in mm -hmm. golf, you're getting the player of the year. Mm -hmm. And that's out of 30 events. Yeah. So yeah, that's... So yeah. I mean, even if Ben continues with tw even say 20%, that's yeah. still a great number. Yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, I mean, congrats to, to Dayask, you and Matt Wright. I mean, that's huge. Big win for them. And they got to play it on a Sunday. Yes. They didn't have to wait. I'm sure they were thrilled to I'm get sure out of Matt there. I'm sure was like, I got a freaking job to be at tomorrow. Exactly. I wonder if he drove. To, how far is the drive from Austin to Wichita? It's probably six hours. Oh, so they probably flew. Yeah. All right, moving South, on. Southwest. Uh, Matt seems like a Southwest guy. Women's doubles. Women's doubles. We've got we've got some backcourt cattiness in women's doubles. I want to touch on. I've never seen you so amped before. I'm not amped. I just think that it's interesting. So women's doubles. Okay. Jeannie Bouchard. My girl. Your girl, which I need to play with her again. She shows up. Okay. And we will post the picture. Okay. In a bright green color of this ball outfit. Nothing wrong with that. Literally head to toe the color of this ball. Now we know that it is, they're playing, they had to play an hour away indoors mm -hmm. at the East side paddle club. And I heard that the lighting wasn't, it was fine, but it wasn't ideal when somebody's wearing essentially a, it's a wrestling green outfit. Okay. So she was playing two players from Utah that we know. And one of them just said, Hey, look, I cannot pick up the ball off of her outfit, you know, and Don Stanley comes over. And he takes the ball and he holds it up to her shirt and mm -hmm. the ball disappears. It was like he was a magician. Uh -huh. He was doing a magic trick. He was like David Copperfield. <laughs> and Jeannie was like, well, I don't have anything else. And he said, well, do you have a jacket? And she's like, well, yeah, but it's too hot in here. Yeah. And he said, well, I need you to really put on that jacket because we can't see the ball. Okay. So they put on the jacket. Jeannie is not happy about this. Okay. So the match starts. And one of these players, I guess, hits a drop that's a little bit high. Mm -hmm. And Jeannie flushes it. Mm -hmm. It's her first good shot ever in pickleball. Okay. And she calls the girl the B word. Do we have this on film? I mean, this is from the mouths of several witnesses. <laughs> now, these are, we'll say, allegedly, just so we don't get in trouble. But she calls her the B word. Okay. And then, I guess, throughout the match, she dropped that, her and her partner dropped that several times as okay. they were playing these girls. And then they ended up losing. Okay. So I've got two questions. One, that's like typical mean girl stuff. Like literally, that's like that is the plot of mean girls. Uh huh. Like what are you what are you doing? Like if she can't see the ball, she can't see the ball. <laughs> but I guess it also happened in a previous match. Okay. With several of those players as well. Against the same people? Against one of the same partners. Okay. Not Jeannie, but Okay. But Dominique is what I was told. <laughs> I mean let's just let's just call it what it is. <laughs> and so I guess it happened like in I think it was Mesa or something like that. Okay. And those same words were flying out of people's mouths. So here's my question. One, can you call somebody a bitch and then lose? You sure can. How does that like first of all, you can't. There's well, an unwritten you can. rule. That because if you people have done that. Okay, yes. But there's an unwritten rule. Like, if you're losing, you probably should be quiet. Okay. Okay, she didn't lose because she had to wear a jacket. Okay, she lost because she's bad at pickleball right now. And because she right now train Right now. And because she goes to the club the night before. And because she was freaking in Aspen at, at 9 a.m. when she had a freaking noon match in Mesa. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why she's bad at pickleball. Because she doesn't give a shit. Because she's getting a million dollars a year. To literally just show up and look pretty. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Like it is what it is. She is a spectacle at this point. Hey, she was up 8-0 on Paris Talk. And she lost. <laughs> she's a spectacle at this point in her career. And she's a TV draw. And that's why she's there. Uh -huh. She's not good at pickleball. 
Yet. And she could be good at pickleball at some point because obviously if you have a high level tennis background, there is a chance that you have the skills and the ability and the work ethic. She is yet to prove in that. I feel like you're holding back a little bit, Jimmy. I'm just saying. But you also can't show up and just because these girls are lower level girls in your eyes and because they're trying to break through into the sport and you got a free pass to the freaking quarterfinals in every event you play in, treat them like crap. We need to verify this. We need to get them on the pod. Yeah, let's get them on the pod. <clears throat> let's get them on the pod. Okay. Because you can't do that. Like everybody in that first round, that round of 64, right? We all have to start somewhere. Unless you started when there was only six teams in women's doubles back in the day, which was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. you, all have to, <laughs> you all have to start somewhere. Everybody's got to break through somewhere. Yeah. Right? And unfortunately, there's going to be bitterness because a couple people got free passes. Yeah. And one of those people is Jeannie. And she's yet to earn that. Now, there's other girls on there that like, yeah, you're new to the sport. So you got to win your way in. Yeah. And what's going to happen when one of these girls who starts like that? Well, look, let's look at Caitlin Christian. Mm -hmm. That's how she started, right? Yeah. And now she's earning respect of everybody else. And now she's in the finals for singles. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you have to break through in some way. So like treating these, these new up-and-comers like they're beneath you mm -hmm. is a bad look. The other thing is, is who's to say that one of them isn't going to freaking blow up and you're going to need a partner at some point? Right? Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. Like everybody has to start at some point. Anyways, that's just anything else. No, that just bugged me. Like, just be nice to people. Be chill about that stuff. Like these are like, will you draft genie? Cause you're in um challenger. No, drafter. I, no, I drafter. Would, if we had six players, drafter. I would probably draft genie just to watch her sit on the bench. <laughs> All right. Last two picks, Jilly B and genie. Who do you choose? I choose Jill because she could actually contribute. You, cho you choose Jill? With a muzzle, yes. <laughs> Do you know how much more exposure the Black Bears would get with Jeannie on your team? Yeah, she would sit on the bench. You'd get a ton we of exposure. We would never use Jeannie. If there were six players, we would never play her. Okay, moving on. Uh, women's doubles. What she would prefer. She'd be sitting there eating a we're steak or something. A steak? Yeah, that's what she's eating in Aspen. All right, nice. Um, steak's great. All right, These women's doubles. We're crazy. starting to see, as you say, a lot more parody in uh Tons women's doubles of parody it's fun yeah. it's, it's entertaining awesome. yeah we that's love what it makes it fun yeah okay so annalee and Catherine, what's their 60 plus 60 something and all 60 though. plus match win streak they have never lost as a duo as a team there's a rumor that Catherine didn't play minnesota women's because she didn't want to break her streak mm -hmm. she didn't want to play with somebody else mm -hmm. and break her winning streak anyways they end up going down in the finals Anna Bright. Incredible match. The librarian, Rachel, the librarian, Rohrbacher. Incredible match. But I will tell you this. Rachel and Anna dominated that from start to finish. They may have lost game two, but they dominated that match. They had, I believe, nine, nine match points. Yes, nine championship points. Match points, yeah. To finally put it away. Anna was spectacular. I mean, Rachel's freaking forehand. She has insane power. She does. And she gets a ton of whip. She yeah. gets a ton of top spin on it. And look, Anna found this girl on a freaking trash heap. And she picked her up before anybody was really high on her. Like we, I think I've told you this story before, but we were going to take Rachel mm -hmm. for the Bears back in July. Mm -hmm. And we thought we were so safe. Mm -hmm. Nobody had heard of her. And we thought we were safe having her literally stashed is like a third round challenger pick. Yeah. We didn't think she'd get drafted. And all of a sudden she goes in the fourth round. To yeah. The, congrats. The um, congrats to Anna Lee and Catherine. I mean, that's incredible feat to yeah. go 60 plus matches. That's actually yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, dude, it's unheard of. It'll never I don't happen think again. any of these records that Ben and Anna Lee have been setting will be broken within the next five to 10 years. No, no way. I almost want to say never. Yeah. So now, but this is the other thing that's crazy, is look at the four teams in the semis. Mm -hmm. Annalie and Catherine, Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrabacher, mm -hmm. Jackie Kawamoto and Lucy, and Megan and Etta. Yeah. Like, those are four insane teams. Yeah. Like, pickleball, women's pickleball is... You know what all those women do really well? 
they're strong. They can drive the ball. Yep. They're attacking. Yep. They're speeding up. They drive. They speed yep. up. They attack. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, it's just the power in the women's game is getting, mm-hmm. is, is getting like probably, this might be a hyperbole, but it's probably like where the men's game was three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. Like it's getting there. It's yeah. like, I, obviously it's never going to get to the men, you know, but it's um, getting there and it's pretty impressive. Anna Wright with the safety gl- glasses. Yeah. Rachel Warbacher with the prescription readers. Not this tournament though. I know she yeah. wasn't, but <laughs> I did get a lot of grief for people for calling her a librarian. People were saying that or Harry Potter. Yes. Also, yeah. do you remember when we did a podcast like, I don't know, four or five months ago? And I said that Anna Bright was catching Annalie Waters. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, you uh, just been a little you premature. threw this out there that they would not win this tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You've got to tout that because you have a lot of L's in your predictions. <laughs> yeah, but, but I want to take a dub. Yeah. Give me the dub. Hey, that's Do a you big, think so? There's a win. lot of players that watch this this podcast. There's a lot, yeah. dude. Um, I literally said their streak ends in Austin. Like I, I was adamant. I, I pounded the table. I know. Um, do you think subconsciously they're thinking about those things that you say? Like you're throwing it out there in the universe, and they're subconsciously. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they care that much. I don't think I'm that important, but I hope so. I hope Annalie Waters watched this and was like, "Damn it, we can't win. <laughs> now we can't win." It's impossible. Okay, awesome. All right, real quick. We are going to take a quick little break and thank our next sponsor, Vulcan Pickleball. It is the official ball of the PPA Tour, the V-Pro Flight. Yeah, we got. I got some news on this I want to talk about. All right, tell me. About this ball. Okay, so I will not speak for Vulcan, but I'm going to speak for some things that I've heard and some things that I found out. Okay. So maybe this isn't good to talk about during the actual sponsorship portion, but... When these Vulcan balls came out in September, October, when we first got our hands on them, Mm -hmm. late summer, right? We played with them for multiple games. Mm -hmm. I would pull them out and I would play with them for 10, 11, 12 games at a time. And they would not go out of round. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't wobble. We wouldn't have any issues. And I was like, this is the best ball. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then PPA got their hands on some and they tested them and they played them with the pros and... And they were like, yeah, we love it. And they actually told Vulcan, don't make any changes. Mm-hmm. So then Vulcan's like, done, we're ready. Because they actually, I don't know if people know this, but this Vulcan actually developed this ball in fall of 2022. Mm-hmm. So then the PPA said, yeah, let's do this. And Vulcan made a big, massive order. Huge bulk order. And when they made that bulk order, the quality seemed to suffer a little bit. It seemed like... They started to go out around. There are some issues with the ball. And when you make a bulk order like that, the quality seemed to suffer. Mm-hmm. So the craziest part to me is what I was, what I just heard. I just, someone sent me an email. Vulcan, they have the contract. It's mm-hmm. a three year freaking deal or whatever it is. Multi-year deal. Yeah. They've already paid the money. They could just sit on this and they could be like, yeah, we already paid the money. We're good. And they could call it a day. Mm-hmm. But Vulcan is actually gone back to the drawing board Mm -hmm. and they're developing a brand new ball, like a, like not a brand new ball, but they're developing and they're moving quick and they're moving quick. They're going back to try and develop that ball that they had initially. And they're having like a new resin Mm -hmm. manufacturer. They hired engineers and they're trying to have it done by the summer. Yeah. And they're like literally going back to fix this mistake as opposed to just leaving it being like, we already have a deal. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but that's got to cost them insane amount of money. Yeah. There's a bunch of pre-orders for their balls right now because obviously we knew they ran out. Yeah, they haven't been fulfilled. That haven't been fulfilled. I think there's over 400. Mm-hmm. They refunded those people all their money mm-hmm. and then told them, we will send you that amount of balls for free yeah. from our new shipment. Shipment. Yeah. Dude, what? Like, what company does that? Five-star review. That's insane, yeah. right? Like, I think you have to give them tons of credit for recognizing a potential issue and literally doing everything that they can to fix it when they didn't have to. Yeah. Like they literally didn't have the contracts there. It's done. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a huge deal and I'm pumped to see what the, you know, re engineered ball. And to be honest, there was one or two tournaments that this, this ball had a lot of issues. Yeah. But after those one to two tournaments, there hasn't been that many. No, not at all. In terms of, um, 
complaints. Yeah, but we haven't seen complaints. We haven't yeah. seen and and honestly, I think this ball actually did pretty well in the win today. Yeah. So, but I think it's impressive that Vulcan is doing that. Yeah, that's really stand up. Quality. Yeah, and like I mean, any company that would be willing to do that, I think that's a huge deal. I mean, yeah. you 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 hear if you get on any of these forums, even though there's a bunch of freaking nut jobs like Jim Kloss giving us a freaking play by play of some tournament that he put on that. I'm glad it was for a good cause. That's the only credit I'll give him, but nobody <laughs> wanted to hear about every single happening of that tournament. But the nice thing is, would you is, have gone out there and commentated that? No, absolutely not. <laughs> but the, the nice thing about this ball, about the things like this is like you get on there and people will say like, Hey, I'm looking for a new paddle. And their first response is always go with this company. Their, their warranty is amazing or their mm -hmm. customer service is amazing. And I think that Vulcan is, I mean, yeah, that's huge. Anyways, so, uh, thank you, Vulcan. They yeah. also are the titled ball sponsor of KOTC as well. And so they're supporting a lot of things pickleball related. Um, thank you for your support. You guys uh, have incredible customer service and we cannot wait for the future. Yeah. So they're saying early summer, fingers crossed. I think it might be sooner than yeah. that. Maybe. Maybe. Be, that'd we'll be see. sick. We're excited to, to see what. Yeah. So. Moving on. All right, so we did men's doubles, women's doubles. Uh, let's get into mixed doubles, I guess. Mixed doubles. The, the I mean, we just went women's doubles, okay, which was on the Anna Bright show. We went men's <laughs> doubles, which was the Andre Deescu show, and now we're going to combine them. We had Hunter Johnson, Paris Todd, I believe, playing in their first PPA together. Yeah, that's cute. Um, they lost. I played with Etta, right? Yeah, how'd that go? How'd it go with Etta? Etta, local Utah girl, BYU Hawaii. Yeah. She's a great player, a ton of power. Um, I've said this this whole year, but we, I feel like we've had fairly tough draws. Um, in our second round, we played Federico and Rachel Rohrbacher, which last week they came away with a second place. Yeah. Um, so we played them in our second round, and we had a crazy uh, third three games match. And you ended up uh, We ended up winning, yeah. So it was uh, kind of crazy because there was uh, one or two rain delays in between there. So so you had like a f eight hour match yeah. because of rain delays. Yeah. But you beat them 14-12 in the third. We do. We beat them 14-12 in the third. I think uh, Fed and his partner had w three, three match points. Really? And I think we had two or three as well. That's awesome. Yeah. So you fought them off. We fought them off. Um, yeah, it was yeah. a pretty crazy match. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a obviously a great win yeah. for you and Etta. And then we go on and play J.W. Johnson and Sister, and we got Georgia. off to an incredible start. Yeah. And then after that, the errors just piled on, yeah. and we couldn't stop it, which is weird because, I mean, J.W. and uh, his sister are incredible, but I was actually thinking Federico. Do you not, do you not say her name? Uh, I can say it, Georgia. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just say sister. <laughs> I don't know if and sister. I'll, I'll, I don't know if this was like a he who should not be exactly. named. Exactly. <laughs> Voldemort, Voldemort status and sister. I was like, what did Georgia do? Maybe I'll say Georgia and say her brother now. I saw that Lindsay Newman with Drew. Her and uh, I think she was with, was she with Rafa? Not in mixed. Oh, maybe it was in it women. It was women's probably. It was women's. Yeah. And like she was still at the venue eating sandwiches. Like you could see her in the background. Yeah. So she didn't miss lunch at least. Um, anyways, any other good matches? Uh, Julian Arnold, Lauren Stratman, they played uh, Tyra and Dylan. Yeah, beat them in three. Yeah, 11-8 in the third. Yeah, the other thing is, is dude, I, I think that we have to, uh, we got to start talking about Christian Alshon. Okay. Because he's doing it with multiple partners. Your boy. Now. Him and Zayn obviously made a big run. Yeah. Right, he won a gold medal in Minnesota, mm -hmm. and then now he's playing with Jesse, mm -hmm. which he's played with her before this year. But I'm just saying he's playing playing with multiple partners. Yeah, and him and Jesse, look at their wins. Yeah, I mean him and Jesse beat where are they at? Oh, right here. Yeah, so they beat J Dub in Georgia. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They beat Coop and Zane, mm -hmm. and they beat who was their first win? Um, their first one was was it C J Klinger? Yeah, C J Klinger and and you the Castillo. Yeah, so I mean. You know, I just feel like that they've had they had some pretty. I think MLP uh, talk. I think he might be a first round pick. I think he might be too, and I think he may be a late first round. Yeah. But imagine if you're like you have like the twelfth pick in Premier, like kind of like Miami did last year. And Miami went Tyson and Fed. Yeah. You have that twelfth pick, and you can go freaking Alshon and Deescu mm -hmm. or something like that. I think Deescu. And might the thing go. to me that's so impressive with Christian, I've always thought he's a really good player, actually. Um, he's doing this in singles, yeah. doubles, 
and mixed doubles. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's not just doing it in one. He's doing it in all three. Yeah, he's he is definitely. And I pers- my personal opinion, and I actually talked to another player about this, and they agree with me, is that he's being groomed to take over for Ben. Sure. To take over. Like, that's sure. that's the end goal. And I wouldn't be surprised if next year, 2025, sure. it's Christian and Annalie. Sure. I could definitely she see that. She will be 18 then, by the way. Who wins? All Sean and Annalie versus Ben and, let's say, Catherine. I think it'd be I think it'd be really really good. That would match. be a fun match, and I would love to see it. How yeah. about that? But I think that until Alshon knocks off Ben, Ben is still the goat, and Alshon's had success, but he hasn't had success going through Ben. I mean, he he did in men's, but going through Ben and mixed yet. Thomas and Vivian they lose, so they've been very steady this entire yeah. year. They've made is it every finals or I think they made three, yeah, yeah three. three or four finals. Uh, they and end they up losing gold. to Anna Bright. Yeah, so Deescu and Anna Bright, that's the story, right? That's the story of this entire tournament. Like we said, actually, Ma- I would say uh, Annalie Waters and Ben Johns losing to. Well, yes, that's what I'm saying. But Deescu and Anna Bright are the are the ones who have who got the wins, and so I'll give credit to the winners over the losers. But Anna Bright, Deescu, they win 11-3, 11-9, 11-3, and honestly, it wasn't even that close. You're talking about the gold medal. Yeah, yeah, they win the gold. And they rolled them. Do you have any snarky comments or anything like that? To no, I look. Ben looked disinterested. Yeah. Truthfully, he looked disinterested. He looked. It's bothered. championship Monday. No one's ever heard of that. Yeah, no he one's looked, ever heard of that. He looked bothered by the wind. It's his birthday. Yeah. So he probably had his mind somewhere else. He wanted to put a little hat on, have some cake. <laughs> he he just looked disinterested, and he looked bothered by Annalie. Mm-hmm. Annalie walked off as she does when she loses. Mm-hmm. Stormed off. Mm-hmm. Um, she did come back for women's doubles to lose again. Mm-hmm. She also did like a talk to the hand thing to her mom, like mm-hmm. at one point. But yeah, I mean, Deskew and Anna Bright. Anna Bright beat Annalie Waters twice. Annalie Waters hasn't lost. Yeah. I mean, how many times have her and Ben lost? You can mm-hmm. probably count it on what, twice, once? Yeah. And her yeah. and Catherine have never lost. Mm-hmm. And Anna Bright did it, beat her both times. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. And she did it without James there, which tells you that he's toxic. Yeah. And it's clear that she needs to get out of that relationship. She, her life is better without him. Although he was there. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. So maybe just him as a coach is better than him as a player. <laughs> he was the problem. What, what's the common denominator you're seeing here? Hey, if Matt drops James and Anna Bright drops James, that's great. I would, I would play with James maybe. I might be an in, option. In mixed or in, in men's? men's. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. James likes playing with you. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, and then bronze, Jesse and Christian versus Vivian and Thomas, they canceled the bronze matches. Yep. But again, I mean, those are, you know, you, the seating held out in that, right? Or are they five? Oh, there are five. Yeah. So who, who is the three? Probably Thomas or let's see. No, they made it. Who is the three? Who am I thinking? Oh, was it Fed and Rachel? J-Dub and, oh, J-Dub and sister. Georgia. Oh yeah. And sister. <laughs> the sister of J-Dub. <laughs> So anyways, that's, yeah, it's awesome. I love, dude, the parody. The thing that we always talk about is like Championship Sunday is boring. The parody is coming. Yep. It's great. And honestly, Anna Bright has played really well all year long. So it's awesome to see her finally break through Mm -hmm. and to get on, I mean, two podiums. I think if she would have played singles, she would have won too, to be honest. Maybe. Um, So Anna Lee was signed up for women's singles. Yeah. And then she pulled out a couple days before. She had a previous injury. Okay, that's what they're saying. But from yeah. what other people were saying is that she'll hit like her X win, like 100th win or something like that. And so she was wanting to do it on a bigger stage. I heard that. Is that too. incorrect? or is that? I've you... heard that from other people too. That okay. uh, Maybe it was just in the Discord. Maybe it was an injury. Um, maybe it was just a rumor. Yeah. But I have, I have heard that she wants to get her 100th in like a bigger stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... The reality is, is if you're losing, you're not going to get it at all. It might not be there. <laughs> yeah, it might not be there because you just lost twice. You had two chances to get medals. And... Yeah, I mean, I sh- she'll still get she'll still get it. But she's great. She's yeah. still like the the greatest player, like women's player of all time. But I still think that like they're coming. People are coming. They better freaking you like you can't rest anymore. You better yeah. step up because guess what? There's there's a story about. I think it was. Was it Steve Prefontaine that ran a four minute mile? Mm-hmm. First guy to break the sub. And then four after minute. that, everybody, everybody yeah. could do it. Yep. And that's the thing it, is there's a breakthrough now. Yep. And there's all these women out there that are like, well, I've beaten Anna Bright. Mm-hmm. I've beaten Rachel Rohrbacher. 
So why can't I beat Annalie Waters and yeah. Catherine Parento? Right. And I think that Do it's you think th- that too, you say, Oh, I beat this kid and yeah. he's gotten X amount of points. on. Yeah. Him. Like I beat Leah Jansen and Tyra black <laughs> with Hayden. I beat him to 11 and then we went to 15 that changed, but still, but I think the Kawamoto's had the freaking, they were the ones that came up with the blueprint mm-hmm. and the blueprint is to not be scared of Annalie. Remember, I thought they were trying to slow everything down. They did, but they, but they played Annalie. They weren't scared of her. Yeah. But Rachel and Anna, they were speeding everything up. They so. were, but they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they were still playing AL. Yeah. I think that's really the biggest thing is you can't be scared and hit every ball to Catherine because yeah. that's when AL is at her best is when she can fly in and poach, mm-hmm. right? She's super athletic. And the other thing that, that Anna and Rachel did, which was massive, the biggest thing that they did this entire match is when Catherine and Annalie Waters get on a roll, mm-hmm. they go fast. Yeah, They serve crazy fast. They line up fast and they're just going as fast as they can. Mm-hmm. They, they were up 10-4. Catherine and Anna, and Annalie got to six and then, and they were like, Larry, you saw them. They're sprinting back to go serve. And like Annalie's ready to serve before the ref calls yeah, the yeah. point and they called a timeout yeah. after only two points. And then they called another timeout at 10, eight because they weren't going to let them speed them up. Mm-hmm. And when they get sped up and they get in that rhythm, that's when they're at their best. And so yeah. I thought that was great use of their timeouts. So yeah, congrats to Rachel. Congrats to Anna Bright. Yeah, that's really big. Undefeated streak. Yeah. And then obviously we're, we were talking about mixed I don't, but As I you, said earlier, I personally, I don't think anybody on the men's or women's sides or singles will ever did, beat this record. Did you, like on your bingo card, did you have double gold for Dayescu and Anna Bright? I did not. Yeah. No. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. Men's singles. Real quick. C and D. Big shout out to our next sponsor, C and D Pickleball Nets. Yes. They are heavy duty, quality pickleball nets. Dude, we are making a custom net. We've heard this. And it is gonna be sick. I've heard that before too. No, no, the color. Uh huh. I will take a picture of it. When is it's it the ready. Black Bears one? Yeah. Yeah. And it's the Is new it like Black matted? Or? It's the new Black Bear colors. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> where where is it going? <clears throat> Richie's house. Okay. It is going to be sick. Okay. It, awesome. Yeah. Uh, CND, they make incredible nets. They're used at a ton of, a ton of tournaments. Official net across. sponsor of the APP. Official net sponsor of the APP. They are used at MLP events. Um, yeah. A lot of other pro tournaments and events will use them as well. If you're looking to set up a club, get one for your house, your church, your gym, anything yeah. Reach out to them. Use our code KOTC. They do work with you if you are replacing bulk orders, which there are a lot of people who uh, do that. Yeah, I mean, there's so many of these indoor facilities. Yeah. Like, if you you want to have an indoor facility and you want to be as like as high quality as it gets, yeah. you're making a massive mistake. There was another uh, nice facility that I saw the other day. I can't remember where. Maybe New York or California. And th- once again, they had these. T- very flimsy, cheap yeah. uh, nets. I'm like, oh it my god! It doesn't gosh. make any sense. You're gonna have this indoor facility. You're gonna spend all this money. Nets are one of the most important things. Yeah, right. Nobody I would wants- rather play with a heavy duty net like C and D, and then uh, uh, with temporary lines rather than a dedicated surface with a flimsy flimsy net. net. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so you, you're making these indoor facilities, and you want to be the best. You need to have the best net. Yeah. So check out the best pickleballnets.com. And use code KOTC. And use code KOTC. And yeah. All right. Awesome, moving awesome on guys. to singles. 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 All right. Uh, let's start with women's. Yeah. So Annalie pulled out because okay. allegedly the 100. Did you know that if you're signed up for a tournament and they put your name in the draw, but before the tournament so actually stupid. happens yeah. and you have to pull out, you have to get a doctor's note. Oh, really? Otherwise, you'll be fined and or lose points. Oh. And so I was signed up because I was planning on playing it, but then yeah. I kind of got injured in Minnesota. Yeah. And so they said I had to get a doctor's note, otherwise I'd be fined or lose points. Did you get one? Yeah, I did. Who told you that? Dylan? Yes. Yeah, Dylan. <laughs> wow. So Anna Lee, assuming... Um, she didn't lose any points or anything like that. Then she probably had to get a doctor's note. Do you think Annalie has to get a doctor's note or does she do whatever she's she treated wants? just as everybody because else? I've right? also heard that Annalie has complained about her times when she's playing and things mm-hmm. and they've moved them around and changed her draws and her times because she wants to be on 
center doesn't want to play right after another match yeah. and they move things around for her. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that in tennis too, um, how Roger Federer, he always got preferential treatment, which makes sense. I mean, you're bringing in the biggest crowds. Not anymore. Anna Bright gets preferential treatment now. Hey, one win over somebody doesn't make... Anna Bright, Lee is now your mom. Wear some Gucci out of her closet. Okay, um, anything you like in women? So yeah, we so have... the, biggest, the biggest thing is Caitlin Christian, right? Caitlin yep. Christian was, she's a tennis player, came over from tennis. She's had really good single success. She and has... she's been playing for... Four, four years or so, maybe even more. Yeah, but she's pretty new. She signed that deal with PPA. Yeah, pretty pretty new. Where she's really started to to focus on pickleball. And they put her time. in the round of sixty four too. Yeah, she had to earn her way because she's not a mean girl. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. had a big. She had a great round. I mean, she's a what's she a ten seed? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen seed. Yeah. yeah. So she had some big wins. Brooke Buckner is a really good singles player. She beat her in three. Nine and nine. Yeah. Nine, nine, nine. Yeah, Eleven, nine. That's crazy. Yeah. And then she ends up beating Paris Todd, who we know Paris has been on a big run for singles. Yep. And gets to the championship against Judith. Yeah. And so we were watching that as we were recording yeah. this. And Caitlin had a pretty big lead in the third game. And Judith fought, fought, fought. And she came back to yeah. win 11-7. So Judith, who I did some commentating with at finals. Mm -hmm. And... She yeah ends up picking up a big win. Is that that's her first gold? I think that's her first PPA gold. I think so. So big win for. By her. the way, I think somebody corrected us. I think Salome. That's her second gold. It is we, her second. Okay. Yeah, I think somebody said what, that. What do you think about the the Catherine Georgia match? So Catherine wins game one eleven zero, mm -hmm. and then the sister of J Dub <laughs> wins game two eleven zero. Have you ever seen that before? The, the daughter of Julie. The daughter of Julie. Um, I the <laughs> protege of Mercha. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's pretty wild. And I was actually watching that match as well. And I think this, I don't know why we're going to keep going along with it. The sister of J dub <laughs> was up like you eight, started it. eight Oh, in the third too. Oh, really? Something like that. Maybe eight, one, but then Catherine was able to rattle yeah. off a, a couple of so points. 11 0 and then Oh 11 and then 11 five. Yeah. And then, she, but she ends up losing to Judith. Yeah. And, uh, in the semis, and yeah, so big freaking win for Judith Castillo. I mean, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she pronounced it. Are you sure? It when we did, yeah. When Are you we sure? Did, when we did the commentary. One more time, what is it? Judith Castillo. I don't think that's it. I think that's it. No. Yeah, because when we when we did commentating, she said it herself, and obviously. Did you say Judith? She, no. Can you stop? <laughs> One more time. How about how about the rumored girlfriend of J-Dub? <laughs> <laughs> there was a rumor about that for a while. Yeah. Is that true? I haven't heard recently. Oh. Yeah. Did you ever see when they were in the background at that tournament and they were like sitting and like consoling? It was probably cold. No, you could see it though. <clears throat> like I see think, what? I don't think they realized they were on camera. Okay, moving on. All right, men's singles. If I can yeah. find it. All right. So you didn't ben play. Johns. You got a doctor's note. I, I got a doctor's note. <laughs> you pulled note. out. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, Shout out to our guy, Big H. Big win over Connor Garnett. And I was talking to Connor, and yeah. I think he was a little fatigued from the previous week from Minnesota. Oh, boy. He Connor. wishes he had a doctor's note. Oh, boy, Connor. Big win for Big H. Where's he at? He beat freaking Connor. And then also. Um, and not only that, but in two. Yeah, beat him in two. Yeah. Um, and then he had to play Jack Sock and he, did you hear when he turned to the crowd? No. And he said, do you know where it's going? Cause I don't, do you know what he said to the crowd? So Jack was just ripping forehands past uh -huh. big H over and over. Uh -huh. And he turned to the crowd and he said, do you guys know where the ball's going? Because I don't, <laughs> <laughs> because Jack was just, he had no clue. Yeah. I mean, he had big H on a string. Yeah. So then we get to Jack Sock and Ben Johns. And did you see the lefty point? I did. That was pretty funny. So Ben serves at lefty. Yeah. And Jack. Which, goes, by the way, was a total illegal serve. Yes, he, it was. He tosses it up. Yeah. And he's hitting it up here. Yeah. And so Jack goes to return at lefty in the middle of a freaking semi. Yeah. In the third game. In the third game. Yeah. And Jack puts it into the net. Yeah. Um, I thought he would have at least made the return. Yeah. But. That's funny. Yeah. So Ben picks up that win in three over Jack. And then he plays Fed today and on the other side of the bracket christian Alshon again mm -hmm. ends up losing the semis but he would have been playing for bronze today yeah and so the big thing with that is 
I mean, Ben had just, so this is what was weird is the, is the order of things. Unless they were trying to get Ben home for his birthday, mm-hmm. he played, he played mixed and then he played singles back to back. Yeah. And he actually, actually worked to his advantage. Sure. Because he said he had played three games in the wind. Yeah. And so he ends up beating Fed 11-5, 11-7. He was never really in trouble. So I, I watched that um, live. Well, not yeah. in person, but just yeah. on the computer. Yeah. And there was one point that Fed was up, I think, 5-4 or 6. Or, yeah, probably 5-4 or 5-3. Yeah. And he just missed it. It was like an overhead, a swinging volley, and it hits the net tape. And then after that point, I feel like the entire momentum switched, and Ben just went off. But yeah. had he made that point, yeah. he would have been up a couple points and yeah. I think he yeah I think he was to... up 6-4 well and that was 6-4 the... it would have been 5-3 oh 5-3 yeah. yeah and then he went that would have put him exactly. up 6-3 yeah. And yeah but it's crazy how one point can change yeah everything. but I also think on the flip side Ben missed an overhead mm-hmm. and he complained about the win like to himself and then I think he flipped that switch himself too mm-hmm. like so yeah so yeah. big big I mean Ben ends up getting a gold something Annalie wasn't able to do this weekend so between Ben and Annalie, the triple crown champs, yep. who normally walk away with six, mm-hmm. they walked away with one. Yeah. Pretty I mean, pretty impressive. Like like we said, the parody is coming. Round of sixteen, I mean, even round of thirty two is well so tough. Well, dude, in well let's look at this. Look at round of sixteen. So six, tough. Look at just round of sixteen, okay? Okay, Ben plays Fook. Yeah. Who who beat me two yeah, tournaments but ago? But he took him to three. He took him to three, and he Fook actually almost won the first game. Yeah, had so, he won the first game, yeah, he maybe. lost twelve ten. Yeah. yeah, and then this is round of thirty two. Yeah, and then Anton Goods, who has who's had some good runs and mm-hmm. singles. Wyatt Stone, yeah. obviously J Dub. Yeah, Brian, Brian Hammond takes J Dub to three. I mean, these are people that like look at this. Brian Hammond takes J Dub to three. Yeah, uh, Kwong Duong has to play Jack Monroe. Connor Garnett has to play Tanner Tomasi, who's solid. Dustin Boyer, who we talked about last podcast, that's who Pablo has to play in the round of 32. Yeah. Jack These Sock, are tough matches. Yeah. Look, dude, Jack Sock goes yeah. to three yeah. with Oliver Frank. Like, it's pretty insane. Mm-hmm. Like, everything is, there's no gimmies anymore. You know, I mean, even some of the round of 64s are tough. They're contested. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's getting tough, and that's what we want to see as fans, right? Yeah. It makes it. It makes it more entertaining. So yeah, I mean, it makes it more entertaining for sure. But I wonder if they're going to or what changes they'll make because singles is so tough on the body, and if you're playing these quality of matches every yeah. single match, well, I, like I mean, progression's the answer. Yeah, I think we're going to see more and more progression. I also think that at some point, like my prediction, like say 2025, mm-hmm. you're going to see say 15 progression tournaments and 10. Mm-hmm. regular tournaments. Yeah. And I think you're going to see players play all 15 progression mm-hmm. and then play six MLPs or whatever yeah. it is. And that's it. Yeah. And they're not going to play the other tournaments. Yeah. And those other tournaments are going to be more for, you know, maybe they are going to be for those players trying to break through and get yeah. points. And, Anyways, yeah. I, I enjoy watching singles now. It's fun. I mean, yeah. the quality, awesome. the, the talent and, is and, so high. And the contrast is different in how everybody plays, right? Like yeah. Jack Sock is going to stand back and rip, right? Um, ben and Fed, they almost mirror images of each other. They play mm-hmm. that cat and mouse. Mm-hmm. Christian does both, mm-hmm. right? Like J Dub, he plays that cat and mouse. So it's just interesting. So yeah. Okay. Anything else with the tournament? No. I mean, there's big weekend, fun weekend. They had South by Southwest. Yeah, in Austin, South by Southwest, which jacked time. up all the flights prices. Um, what everything about hotels. Out there? Hotels weren't too bad because we were outside of the city. We were oh, 30 that's, minutes outside. Yeah, that's right. Um, but. I've gotten my last four trips. Yeah. Guess how much my flight tickets were for each of them. Thousand bucks. A thousand dollars each trip. Really? Within fifty dollars. Hopefully you're getting that stipend. That four hundred dollars stipend. <laughs> Does that help cover it? <laughs> it helps, but it doesn't cover it. <laughs> Is that why you don't But have... I'm not joking. My last four trips, I promise you, all within fifty dollars of a thousand. That's crazy. So and not. it's not like you're like I mean you, you went Minnesota. Granted, granted I Austin. probably could find cheaper airlines. I do most of the time fly Delta. I'll always fly Delta, um, and they're direct flights, so that's nice. And but you always go first class. I don't always go first class. I get upgraded, but did I don't, you get upgraded on this one? On the way back, I did. You did? Yeah. How'd that? Feel? That's why we couldn't win. Otherwise, I would have missed my flight. <laughs> I know. I also remember in Minnesota, you were annoyed. That you had been upgraded and you had to play championship Sunday and change your flight. Yeah. Did you still get upgraded on the way back? I bought the first class. Oh my, this guy. Yeah. This guy. 
Um, but yeah, flights are insane, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, everything. flights up to everything. Like the cost to travel to these tournaments is yeah. getting. It's it's a lot. Yeah, car rentals, everything. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on. We're going into our favorite uh, section of the episode. We're going into questions. Uh, but first and foremost, we want to give a big shout out to Paddle Reset. We love Paddle. Uh, Jimmy, Yeah. give us a rundown of what Paddle is. We Paddle know you've been listening to us and yeah. wanting to buy it. Here's yeah. your chance. Now's your chance. Go do it. You won't be sorry. Spray it on your paddle. Take the cloth. You wipe it off. What it does is it emulsifies, emulsifies all of the little fragments and the dirt and the grime. And then it allows you to wipe it all off, cleans your paddle, keeps your grooves clean, makes your paddle last longer, keeps that spin nice and tight. You want to hit freaking forehand whips like Rachel Rohrbacher? I bet she uses paddle reset. Was that chat GPT? That was incredible. <laughs> Not bad. They need to clip that. Is that pretty good? That was good. Okay. Uh, anyways, yeah. Thank you for your support. It Not cleans the paddle. Rodeo. Um, it smells incredible too, by the way, yeah, and it it's great value. I just ran out of my first bottle that I've had for five months or so. Um, and so yeah, cleans the paddle, but if you notice most of the, most of the players, not even top players, but most yeah. of the players they they're always cleaning their paddle with their hand, with their yeah. hand, wiping yeah. it down, always. wiping it yeah. down. And so this yeah. will do it safe and effectively. Um, go check them out. Paddle reset pickleball dot shop and use code KOTC. Thank you for the support. All right, questions. Yeah, questions. Do you have any questions, Jimmy? Yeah. So there's a bunch in the in the Discord. You like, I'll pull up a few. Um. So here's 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 a good question. Would Tyler and Ben, after two months of practice, be more or less or equally dominant than Ben and Colin? What are your thoughts? I think you'd be better. So um, to me, it's tricky because. Pickleball and almost every sport is all about matchups. Yeah. I think my ceiling is more dangerous. Yeah. It's more, um, there's a lot more power weapons yeah. when I'm with Ben, but maybe the low is probably greater than with Colin. Colin is very good within like this range. He can defend, he can block, but going up against those better teams, I think my lefty, my that, Ernie threat, I think that might be a little bit higher. That's is probably one of the most honest answers you've given to a question. I'm very honest. No, I'm just saying like it's you I think you're dead on. I think yeah. Colin is I think Colin's consistency yeah. is there but Colin doesn't hurt you. Yes. Colin's not going to hurt you in any way. Mm -hmm. And so you know where your highs are obviously much higher than Colin. Mm -hmm. Right? But with risk comes reward, right? With some of the reward comes risk, I guess. And so yeah, I totally agree with that 100%. Uh but it would be fun. I mean, yeah. The thing that honestly one of my biggest accomplishments and granted i'm playing with ben and he's by far the best right now but we lost an mlp and this is rally scoring rally scoring where which, i think which anybody we know can makes win. very minimal difference based off the stats please but keep going. please we lost two games the entire season yeah, going to a super insane. final and it's obviously that ben's vulnerable we're seeing ben yeah. lose so it's not like yeah. he's not yeah anything else what else uh yeah question for the pod anna bright's paddle from the discord okay uh, how we, love, you, we love these guys. They are hilarious. Awesome. They, they roast me. We joke. Yeah. They're good. How, Volnatic, Volnatic Scare, Scarecrow. Who yeah. else is there? Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Big T, Dragon, <laughs> The Mom, Dramaniac. Okay. Uh, let's see. Question for the pod. How do you see ALW bouncing back after this weekend? No golds for the first time in 37 tourneys. Okay. A year and a half. Almost two years. And no longer undefeated in women's doubles with CP. How do you see her bouncing back? I think she bounces back fine. I think she'll be strong. Like if you had a million dollars, you would still put it on her next tournament. Mm, I would, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who like else would you still put it on? The favorite, right? Yeah. 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 I think she bounces back fine. I think. Do I think she comes back stronger? And you know, I don't know about that. I actually think that there's a chink in her armor now, and people yeah. feel like maybe they have a have a chance. Yeah, and I mean. It, it is an excuse, but it was true. But the weather and conditions, they weren't ideal. And so if yeah. you play in better conditions. What's next? North Carolina? Yeah, and that's not in two in, weeks. In, oh, it's not indoor. It's not year. indoor. Yeah, unfortunately. So that'll be interesting, yeah. Okay, one more question. Big T from the Discord. Do you think the big gold medal upsets at PPA Austin were a fluke or just the beginning of the end of the Johns Waters, Waters Parento domination? Again, like you said, the elements mm -hmm. didn't help. We did Championship Monday. There's wind, there's yeah. rain, 
that changed things up routine, right? All of that gets switched. But there was a lot of players I was talking to. Um, and they said we would be totally okay if they cancel this tournament. Yeah. Like during the tournament, like during the rain delays, they said we would be totally, and this was more than one person. They said we would be totally fine if they canceled this. Obviously PPA is not going to do that, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Somebody said, what are the vibe teams that joined MLP? Are they going to be challenger or premier? Uh, this has all been done in the past, so it should be out there, but off my memory, I think it's, um, the pioneer or no, the black diamonds, the salt Lake black diamond, Utah black diamonds, um, Dallas. What else is there? Uh, the vibe vibe teams, the drive Drive. and Dallas pickleball club. Yeah. Isn't there like four or five? There's only four. Oh, Arizona, Utah, Seattle, Good. Pioneers and Dallas Pickleball Club. Gotcha. So yeah, I don't know what that merger actually means. I think the only thing that that I can figure out when they're saying that Vibe is officially merged is that the, there's some players that signed with PPA mm-hmm. and they agreed to Vibe events mm-hmm. and they signed with Vibe. Like if you look at your contract, it says Vibe, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that with the Vibe actually merging, merging with MLP, that maybe those players' contracts will now be, um, I guess turned into MLP events. Yep. And so that's how they're going to get these players to play MLP. Do Matt and Lucy play MLP? That's a great question. I have actually talked to Lucy about it. And I think she's probably right in the middle on if they will or they won't. Mm-hmm. I think they are one of the one people who, who don't actually have it in their contract where they have to play. I don't yep. know that for sure, but I, I don't know. I don't know if they will or they won't. I think that with MLP piggybacking off of PPA the way it is, uh, I can't imagine Matt playing MLP just because of, yeah, his and if word, Matt doesn't yeah. play, I can't imagine Lucy playing just because of, you know, this is a guy that has a full-time job yeah. as an attorney. And that's a lot of, is he making more do- doing pickleball or his, his normal, oh, he's going to make the same amount doing pickleball, whether he just does PPAs on the weekends mm-hmm. or whether he does MLPs and PPAs. Right. Yeah. So for him, I don't think it's going to matter. So somebody said, what's the real deal with Riley's contract? Um, I don't know what you mean by the real deal, but he's planning on doing his 200 days of coaching. Yeah, he's doing coaching. That's why he's pulled out of all these events and he's going to play MLPs and he's going to coach and he's probably not going to play any PPAs because he has to pay his own entry fees, his own travel, his own everything. And there's not a lot of money in it for him right now. So it just doesn't make sense. The only thing that way I could see that changing is if pro XR Maybe they say, we'll pay your entry fees, we'll pay your travel, but we really want you out there in terms of... But that's interesting because I've been talking to a couple sponsors and we were talking about that exact situation and a lot of them said they would be mad at their player if they decided to just go with coaching. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. And I I know, I mean, Jilly B on her podcast... mm -hmm. You watch it? No, I. someone told me and clipped it Mm -hmm. and they told me that that she said straight up on her podcast that the reason Leia signed was because you essentially her sponsors Mm -hmm. were like, Hey, you've got to sign. So that'll be interesting because if that's the case, then will any of his current sponsors drop or try to work something else? I I mean, that's the thing is if I'm paying this dude a lot of money, I'm not paying him to go freaking coach in, in Albuquerque somewhere or Calgary. With a Rolex on his forearm. Yeah. Like I'm not paying, I'm not sponsoring him to go do those things. I'm sponsoring him to be on center court, to win matches, to be on the podium, you know, to do all those things. So I feel like irrelevance could come very, very quickly for Riley Newman. Somebody said, Tyler, I hope you are finally starting to get some better partner requests. Thank you. Um, Are you, are you Tyler? This is a good question. I mean, I feel like there's a group of us that are kind of all in that same situation that, 10 to 20 spot and everybody's just trying to do what's best for them, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I've had a couple more people reach out to me due to my uh, recent performances. Yeah. Pickleball super fan said, do fans cheering for your team make a difference? Pickleball I would say, fans are rad. I know they're awesome. The big freaking neck. Oh, I need to wear that chain. Oh, still. you forgot on too. Oh yeah. Chain and on next, next okay. one. Speaking uh, of that real quick, I need to, yes, you they finish, do. You finish that. Yes, they do. And then 100%. I need to say something. hundred percent. Go okay. Ahead. I got sent. I made some comments about Valer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Valer paddles. Yes. And I only had one experience, a couple experiences with Valer. They sent me some, which is props to them. Mm-hmm. 
They sent me a shirt too. And you still don't like them? No, no, no. I tried them. I tried them. And I am man enough to admit I was wrong. That Kyle. What else are you wrong about? Lots of things. Trust me. Story of my life. Kyle Yates paddle is legit. First of all, it's sexy. You it's just like the colors. Pink. But it has great grit. Mm-hmm. It has great power. Um, honestly, it's very, very well made. Like I was wrong. So Volaire, I'm sorry. Go check them out. Their paddles are legit. That was my fault. I messed up. I will talk about some. Go other- buy them on Pickleball Central and use our code KOTC. Yes, KOTC. I'll yeah. talk about some other crappy paddle. Like what's that one? Groovin or something. <laughs> Isn't that the one Jilly uses? Shh, don't. All right. Uh, somebody said, how many women do you think will be drafted in round one of the premier draft? Um, I think Annalie. Okay. Anna Bright. I think Anna Bright. Catherine. And I think Catherine at the end of the round and that's it. So three, three of the 12. I think three of the 12. Okay. I think that we're seeing that, that we saw it in last MLP that if you have dominant males Mm -hmm. that you can, you know, there's only a couple females out there that you have to have someone that can carry. Mm -hmm. Um, I also well, I actually had a question that said, Jimmy, who do you think? And we'll do a mock draft, but who do you think falls? Mm-hmm. And just off the top of my head, I think there's a hundred per, I mean, there's, there's no way that Vivian Glasman doesn't fall at this point. She's not playing, right? She's not, I mean, unless somebody's drafting on potential, because yeah, yeah. You, but she's just not playing right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think that Piznik has proven enough to move up. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt that she's a premier league player. So real quick, we're, we are going to do another video this week and yeah. we'll talk about this a lot more in depth. Yeah. But who do you think drops from premier for men, male? Yeah. And then who do you think goes up from so, challenger? So in, in female, that's, that's, I mean, I honestly, yeah. that might be it. I mean, Lauren Stratman, you know, she hasn't had great results, but I think she's getting better and better this year. So I don't think that Lauren Stratman's in any danger at this point. Um, in terms of males, it's going to be really interesting because Tardio for sure is going up. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a guarantee. So who does he take? Uh, I mean, I think if Tardio goes up, I think that the obvious choice again, and I think it's because he's just had a huge layoff and you haven't seen him is AJ. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't say somebody else, but okay. H- Hunter is a possibility. Eric oh, Lang. Up? Eric Lang. Eric Lang. AJ Hunter and Eric Lang are all possibilities in my uh-huh. opinion to fall. Okay. Okay, but Eric Lang is coming off of a win. No, he did it with Ben, but he still got a win. Mm-hmm. So that's tough. But I think you could see any of those three fall. Mm-hmm. And then going up, I think you could see Tardio. Mm-hmm. I think, and I, honestly, I think you could see Rafa Hewitt fall possibly. And going up, I think it could be Tardio. I think you could see CJ Klinger go up just because he had so much success last time. Okay, who else? Jame, maybe? Yeah, I was just thinking of that. Could be interesting. Yeah, Jame is, is an interesting choice. And then, I mean, do you – because remember, we're talking about potential here too because now it's three-year deals. Yeah. And you're on the same team for three I years. I imagine they're going to modify that somehow. So does somebody take a reach on a on someone that's, yeah. you know, a Roscoe Bellamy or a Jack Monroe or, yeah. a, you know, and you say three years from now this 21-year-old is going to be yeah. insane? I don't, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That There's a lot that still needs to play out. But it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that so yeah I, I could see that happening and if any of those four players fall to premiere oh and dj is another one right dj he was challenged oh going he was up. challenger yeah, going yeah. up yeah, yeah i mean he ended up with two bronze and he beat ben johns last year mm-hmm. so the dj play his way back into premiere it's yeah. possible and i think if you get any but if any of those guys fall to challenger and you can get your hands on them that's going to be pretty impressive too okay somebody said tyler how do you deal with comments blaming you for losses do you ignore them how do you how do you deal with hate comments, Jimmy? Dude, I honestly you've got to block out the haters because they don't know. <laughs> They're not there. It's like the Monday morning quarterback they talk about like you call a play, you watch football and you're like, "Why did they call that play? That's so stupid." Or why did he do that? But you don't know the intricacies of every single player, everything that happened. The funniest one that I I get time and time again is the Ernie question. Why like, does Tyler go for so many Ernies? Yeah, they don't understand. Right, that's what's yeah. happening. And I will admit, there are there there are times that I do go for a few too many, but the vast majority of the time, it comes out as net positive. Yeah, well, and the yeah. vast majority of the time, it just people don't get it, and they they don't understand what's happening. I mean, if I've played with Ben Johns 
James Ignatowicz, all these other players, and they've never once told me to not do it or they continuously tell me to do it, I think it's okay. Well, and the other thing is, is as fans, like that's our, that's what we do, yeah. right? That's our right. That's what makes it fun for us is talking about, you know, what ifs and why aren't they doing this? Because we all think we know more than, than the players, but we also don't know what the player strategy is, right? Yeah. Like we don't know what the strategy is on the court. We don't know what their, what their goal was in that match. We don't know who they're targeting, you know, so it's, it's tough to come back with. Okay, we'll, we'll, that, we'll do so. uh, two, two or three more questions. Somebody just barely came in and said, how do you think the PPA could better prepare for things like weather? Well, we already know. They did it. How? They signed a deal with the Pickler. Okay. PPA and the Pickler now have a joint deal. Yeah, but I don't think, well, assuming, you don't think there's, eight, a pick, assuming you, there's a Pickler in that. I mean, 18 months from now, there will be. Yeah, but that's eight. That's a year and a half away. Okay, but I'm just saying that they're preparing in yeah. advance. And I think in the meantime, yeah, they've got to find indoor facilities. They've got to do more indoor tournaments if they can. I think they need to be extremely transparent. They say, hey, if this happens, we are going here. Yeah. They need to have a well-thought-out plan. It needs to be thought out in advance, um, for yeah. sure. And they need to communicate well, that to the participants. Well, I mean, we saw on participants. Friday, the week before the tournament, the week before, people were already talking about the weather for yeah. the following week. So there's no way that they weren't watching that. Or too. or you could just go indoors. Or you just go indoors. Yep. Or you throw everybody on a private jet and you fly them to a pickler. Exactly. Okay, we'll do one or two more from the Discord by the way, shout out Discord. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, somebody asked me, and I've never really talked about this before, oh. but my tennis background. Yeah, let's talk what about it. What is my tennis background, Jimmy? Do you know anything well, about my tennis background? I know background? you played in high school. You played Lone Peak High School. Okay. Shout out Knights, the Go Knights. Knights. Go Lone Peak Knights. Highland, Utah. Yeah. Um, A world-class high school, world, as world. it says on the outside of the school. So, do you know the story? Have you ever heard the story about Lone Peak, about... About how they're on the Jay Leno show? Uh-uh. Have you heard this story? Uh-uh. So Jay Leno, you yeah, everyone knows, late night, right? Mm-hmm. He did this story about Lone Peak. This is Tyler's high school, by the way. Okay. And they had this video going through the high school, mm-hmm. and they're going through the parking lot. Okay. And every car in the parking lot was like Mercedes, <laughs> BMW, right? Those like were all mine. Really nice cars yeah. for a high school. And then they walked through the school into the library, mm-hmm. and there were like two books. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And they did like a whole piece on it, like making fun of it. How they had all these really nice cars and then the library had like two books in it. Yeah. Anyways, that's where Tyler went to high school. Yes. So you were tennis player in high school, state champ? Um, took second like all four years. To Spencer Smith? Yeah, essentially, yeah. So Spencer Smith was obviously a great player. Yeah. Uh, you play, but you guys were state championship team. Weren't you? Didn't you win? No, state? Brighton had a stack team, oh, so right. we were okay. always like second or third okay. or something, something in there. Okay, yeah. yeah. But you ended up playing with your brother a couple of years. No, just singles. In singles? Oh, I thought you played doubles. No. So I guess I don't know about you. Don't know much background. about tennis? Yeah. Anyway, you did somebody, play with Johnny Rocket. I know that. Yeah, Johnny Rocket. Um, yeah. Anyways, I played tennis. I played one year at BYU. Yeah. Um, I was. What, what happened? Can and we then talk, I, can we ask what happened? At BYU? Sure. Yeah. I mean, well, first I'll get there. Okay. Um, okay. I was good in the juniors. Yeah. I was pretty good in the juniors. I was always top three, number one, number two in Utah. Uh And then in our section, I was always top three, top five uh, in the juniors. And then nationally, I was 50 or so, top 50 or so. Did you know any of these other players that you're playing pickleball with now? Yeah, I know a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know what this means. I was a five-star recruit, I believe. Okay. Is that good? That's big. That's pretty good. That's like a four or five-star recruit. Yeah. Um, So I was good in the juniors. And then I get to BYU. I was stoked. I roomed with Patrick Kafka, um, who's now playing pickleball. PK. PK. And anyways, I just get there, and I thought I was going to have a good experience. And the coach at the time, I did not get along with. And I felt like my game just went down the drain really, really, really bad. Um, and then I went on a mission, a two year mission for my church. And then I came back and I was expecting to continue playing, but there was like some miscommunication and, 
Um, the coach didn't really have a spot for me on the team. And so I ended up being the manager for the women's team, the women's okay. tennis team. Yeah. And then that's when I got involved in pickleball. So you just stayed, you still stayed at BYU. I was still at BYU. Yep. Still kind of involved in tennis. Exactly. And that's how you got Megan Dazon, how you met Megan. Yes. Yep. So I've known her since college um, for yeah. 10 years now. And you got her involved in pickleball. Yep. Or at least she saw you playing and yep. wondered what it was. Spencer Smith. Spencer Smith. Patrick Kafka. Patrick Kafka. Uh, Callie was there for a year. Yes. Yep. Uh, there's one more we're missing. Who was it? I mean, Paige Miles was at Utah. There's a guy, Evan yeah. Urbina, who's the head coach at Air Force who plays pickleball. Yeah. Um, so all those guys were All at, these guys were on my team. Were at BYU. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But I think I could have been really good in tennis, but um, the coaching style, we did not get along It was well. not, yeah. We'll have to get Spencer Smith on here to talk about some of the uh, experiences and stories that we have. Yeah. College tennis is crazy because yeah. it's a super low end budget. Like we're all grinding. Yeah. It's not like we're flying private, we're flying first and class and everything like that. We're busting around to these schools yeah. and the stories that these tennis players have are just crazy. That's yeah. nuts. But uh, Patrick, he did extremely well in college, um, yeah. my roommate. And I, I beat him, I don't know, maybe – He'll probably tell me I'm wrong, but maybe 60% of the time in the juniors. Yeah. And so I was decent in the juniors, yeah. but then when I got to college, it just went and a then different route. Spencer Smith, people may not know this, he never lost in high school. Yeah, he was very good in high school. Yeah. Like in yeah. Actually, he was really good in college the first three years. Then his last year was a little bit different, but his first three years, he what was happened? really good. Uh, he did not have a good record. Yeah. I don't know why. I, we'll have to get him on. I'm Should sure. we ask him? I'm sure he'd he love to explain. some stuff? Yeah. Huh. Anyways, Anyways, anything, yeah. anything else? No, but that's interesting. I don't think, I think okay. people have always wanted to know your backstory on that. Yeah. I was lefty. Yeah. I love serving. I love volleying, which I think is why I'm, it translates so well for me to pick a ball. Yeah. Uh, because the serve and then the finesse game with the volleys, I wasn't big on the, at the back. I didn't like to grind out points that much. Spencer Smith, he loved to grind out points. Um, but yeah, I think that's why it translated so easy and so quickly for me yeah. versus other players. Because there's players that I played in tennis that are now coming over to pickleball, and they would have killed me on the tennis court. Yeah. They would have beat me, oh, no, whatever, but they're not good in pickleball. So I, I hear that a lot. Like, I, like I've like i actually talked to Ignatowicz a little bit, and he's like, oh, dude, he used to crush me in tennis. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, it's different. Yeah. It, it it's is weird. Some different. games translate really well. Like Patrick Kafka, he's actually doing pretty good now, but I thought yeah. his game would have translated a lot quicker than it has. Yeah, he's starting to, like, take that next step. Yeah. But, yeah. So. Here's a, there's another question. Okay. Uh, Augie. Where's Augie go in the draft? Um, like, is his stock high enough that someone takes a flyer on him like a Rohrabacher in a premiere? He, so he played with Rettmeyer this last week. Yeah. And I think they had a pretty favorable draw to the round of 16. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying. I what are your it, thoughts? You're it, a GM. It, it, I mean, I can't. I got to keep those close to my vest. But <laughs> I mean, if anything, if anybody has a chance to be in Challenger, I won't mention it. But yeah, it's interesting. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's yeah. we're going to see. All the the thing that I continually harp on is the players that really impress me are beginning to be like Christian Alshon. He's doing well in all three events, yeah. and it doesn't matter who he's playing with. He's still doing well. Yeah. There are some other players that only do well with let's say Ben Johns or Matt Wright or whoever it might be. Yeah. They only do well with those players. I want to see these players play with four or five different. And they're doing it with different partners. Yeah. That's, so the like, biggest thing. that's the biggest thing with Federico for me and Pablo. We only see those two play together. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do they do when they play with other people? Yeah, and it's tough because you can't fault them for that because obviously they've had success and they mm -hmm. want to stick with that. But I do think that it is more impressive. Ben than, Johns? He'll play with almost anybody in the top 15, top 20, and he will almost guarantee carry them to championship. Yeah. Well, we see it in MLP. That's the, yeah. that's the great thing about MLP is we get to see that. Yeah. Like you got to see Ben Johns and Eric Lang, right? You got to see Ben Johns and, and Jesse. You got to see, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what makes it fun. And then you got to see Pablo, or I mean, excuse me, Fed play with Tyson McGuffin. Exactly. And they were okay. Yeah. Like they weren't amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I think that that's what makes that's the element of MLP that I like the most. Yeah. So, Anyways, right. thank you for okay. tuning in. If you've made it thus far, please do us a big favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Also share this video with your friends who love pickleball. Um, we are trying to grow the audience. And so any interaction you guys have with us, 
helps us out. Thank you to our, all of our sponsors. The Pickler, you guys do incredible franchise facilities, indoor pickleball facilities. Pickleball Central, go buy your next paddle, pickleball gear from them. Uh, Vulcan Pickleball, yeah. V Pro Flight, stay tuned. Yes. Um, reset, paddle. Yeah. Paddle reset. Paddle reset, go use their stuff on your paddle. Yep. You'll love it. And go message Jimmy. He needs more people messaging him. Yeah, my DMs are not blowing up by any means. All right, see you guys. Thanks.